Welcome to the Los Altos History Show. I'm Nan Geschke, your guest host. We'll be speaking with Steve Asid and Mark Sandoval. W welcome, Steve and Mark. Welcome Thank you for the, having us. Welcome to the History Show. Um, both Steve and Mark um, have a keen interest in uh, historical preservation. Uh, Steve is a, a contractor and designer. Uh, Mark is a, a local architect. And as I said, they have uh, this interest in historical preservation, um, but I know them best as Los Altos historical commissioners, for I'm a commissioner as well. Um, I thought for the benefit of our viewers um, this evening, uh, Steve and Mark, that it might uh, uh, be interesting for our viewers to know just what the historical commission is, um, you know, what we do and also uh, what kinds of projects we support and what we're responsible for. Do you want to start off, Steve? Um, the commission oversees the uh, operation of History House with its many events and exhibits and also is um, responsible for the resources inventory. Uh, the essay contests and uh, we also produce uh, this show as well as the uh, uh, we have some of the educational videos such as uh, Sense of Place. Good. Um, I think the essay contest um, is one of the most visible um, projects that the uh, Historical Commission really does for the town and it involves um, all public and private school uh, school children from uh, third grade through sixth grade and uh, last year we involved almost 800 students in the contest so I think uh, it was quite it's, successful. it's quite successful right very successful um, now uh, you mentioned uh, that this inventory is that uh, 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 this is something that um, all cities do or uh, for example, is it something that was just uh, do adopted by Los Altos? There's a number of the cities in the area have inventories, um, Palo Alto, Sunnyvale, Santa Clara, Las Gatas, and, and others, um, as well as throughout the state and across the nation. The state, in California, the state mm -hmm. actually has uh, forms that they encourage all the local communities to, uh, to use. and. Um, they have a certified local government program that encourages to follow a certain format in the development of the inventory. Okay, so um, what, how do you go about compiling such an inventory? Um, in Los Altos, we started out by, first of all, doing a windshield survey, and we arbitrarily said, uh, sent a group of volunteers out to look throughout the community by dividing it up into different areas and to take photographs of any building or resource um, that they felt uh, was built or constructed before 1945. If they weren't sure, it didn't matter. And then following the, the completion of the, resource, the, of the windshield survey, we then uh, hired a consultant who had experience with uh, doing other inventories, who reviewed this information, then went and uh, got all the information that we had on the buildings, which included their address, a map of where they were located, a photograph, uh, when they thought the building was built or when they knew it was built. And the, uh, mm -hmm. um, Quite a lot of research went into each uh, of these properties. And this is a one-page, two-sided form that, this, that we used. Mm -hmm. And um, at the, with all this information in hand, it was reviewed. To, uh, in hopes of establishing what the most significant context were 
in the, the town, context being um, the um, aspects of the community development which were most significant and most mm -hmm. pronounced in, within the community. Okay, so um, this inventory then is a physical document and uh, where is it available? It's uh, available at the City Hall and uh, I think we have the... We, we had, the, uh, we had a, a copy of it, I'm sorry, I have to apologize to the viewers, but mm -hmm. uh, we forgot to put it on the set tonight, so <laughs> you can't really see it, but it's a, a binder and it, it has uh, a, a text draft and it also has uh, forms with, um, with a description of the properties that um, have been evaluated mm -hmm. by the Historical uh, Commission. Now you mentioned in, in developing this text or, or context, uh, what were those contexts, Steve, again? We, we decided that there were uh, five significant contexts. The, the archaeological sites um, that preceded um, the arrival of the train, transportation, uh, agriculture, uh, which I guess actually preceded the train, mm -hmm. residential development, uh, commerce, the commercial development, and the mm -hmm. institutions within mm -hmm. the, the community. So that we have those six contexts. Okay, six then. Actually six, yes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, that was developed as a context and it was kind of an evolutionary process and really developing the inventory. Right. Okay, so in, in determining um, how a property ranked, for example, um, you mentioned criteria or, you know, ways to describe property. Could you kind of elaborate a little bit more on that? For at, once the context were established, uh, the, the notion behind the context being that you're trying to, you may only have a, one example of a, an archaeological site, but by virtue of the fact that there's only one, it becomes uh, of major significance. Sure. Where you may have 40 examples of uh, a particular architectural style. A craftsman house, right, something of that nature. Right. So Harold Coleman um, developed a book on the evaluation of historic structures, or not a book, but a, a methodology, and using his format, the Historical Commission um, established their own uh, grading or uh, awarding of points to each of the resources, which would include its age, its the, the purity of its architectural style, the uh, condition and integrity of the original building, the people associated uh, with it and uh, its context. And using the points and formula, we were able to establish the relative significance of each of the resources within each of the context. Okay, so from, maybe it would be good at this point, Steve, to kind of um, ask for an example, either from you or, or Mark, in terms of a building, um, not that you would be able to give exact points, but for example, um, in one of the, the properties that we are going to be designating soon, the, uh, the, the Shou Paul Schaup House, mm -hmm. um, give the viewers an example of, of how those criteria, how the house would be evaluated against those kinds of criteria. Well, I can start with saying that it's an excellent example of a craftsman house that we have in town. Uh, obviously, the significance of the individual uh, is also another. Uh, do you want to? Well, Paul Schaub is one of the founding uh, fathers of the um, downtown area in that he, he came in and bought the um, property that now occupies the Orange and University Avenue mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. and led in its development the um, architects that he chose to des uh, design his house, uh, Wolf and McKenzie, are, have been, uh, has several buildings on the National Register and has a, many of the characteristics the house is, maintains uh, much of its original integrity, particularly across the front facade of the, mm -hmm. the building, although there have been remodels following the, the earthquake where some of the rear of the building was uh, changed after review by the Historical Commission. Mm -hmm. I guess compiling this inventory is all well and good, mm -hmm. um, but why should we be concerned at all with preservation, Mark? I mean, California and mm -hmm. Los Altos is a rather young community, I mean, contra in contrast to some of the other communities in the United States. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, to preserve our resources, it's very important because it uh, gives us a sense of 
uh, the importance of events and people connected to uh, the development of the town or our communities, and it represents the values of our community, not only past, but present as well as future. And uh, I think those are uh, very important to protect and preserve. Would you care the, to comment? Yeah, the, um, the establishment of that link and of being able to use the past as a basis for establishing what an appropriate use for the future would be uh, is, inst you know, it's, it's a, an important part of the process of, of design and of city planning in general. And the, the preservation and planning actually go hand in hand and are a link to the future development of the community. So it's our basis, in other words, from mm -hmm. which the community develops and views itself. Right. And many of these assets are the most important parts of the, uh, uh, that community. Uh, they draw it on tourism, they draw on uh, future uh, uh, residents, uh, because it establishes uh, the values of that community. Um, good example, uh, people move to, let's say, Professorville because of the way in which the streetscape and the uh, community has developed those sure. properties. The character within that particular mm -hmm. group of houses in Palo Alto is something that's um, desired by people moving into the area, and it's something that the people within the area want to maintain. So the preservation effort tries to identify what characteristics uh, is that have their basis in history and how to best preserve them while still allowing for the mm -hmm. development of the area. Okay. Now, by um, having a historical residence or commercial building, for that matter, um, isn't this a violation of your personal property rights, Mark? Well, all properties are subject to some sort of governmental regulation, whether it's zoning, uh, building codes, or other ordinances. Um, if a person with a designated property would exercise their potential rights under a, having it designated, it's actually a benefit. Uh, it allows them certain exemptions as to uh, some of the uh, building codes, and that is due to the fact that we have a historical code which uh, supersedes uh, many of the regulations in the Uniform Building Code. Uh, it also allows for certain exemptions uh, if the findings are met uh, for variance. And in addition to that, there's tax incentives. Uh, if the property does qualify for uh, the Mills Act, uh, there could be some reduction in the property tax on that property. There's always, over you know, the past 20 years at, at least, there, there have been a number of different ways in which tax incentives, primarily for res, uh, commercial property, but also for residential property, have you know, come and gone and, and there's been various aspects to them. And that's a, a continuing process. There's the, the issue of facade easements that can, that can become a, a tax incentive or, or the Mills Act or uh, commercial. So you're saying that there are certain um, uh, properties about uh, a historical building that could be um, viewed Actually, differently or considered precisely. differently, for example, if it were higher than the code is, 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 is currently, that yes. could be taken mm -hmm. into consideration? Or possible setbacks or other things. Uh, uh, we just finished with a, a property uh, where we had to uh, uh, review some of the uh, current zoning uh, requirements as far as restrictions. Uh, so it really isn't just a, another layer of uh, regulation. Uh, it actually provides a, a flexibility within the building codes and ordinances mm -hmm. to uh, develop that property. So what you're saying is that actually um, homeowners with historic property have more leniency in some respects to flexibility. To flexibility. Mm -hmm. That's a better, better word. It's, it's quite possible that if the historic integrity of the building is to preserve and there's something about the building that's in violation of the current ordinance that there can be some accommodation made to permit a continuous use of the building without impinging on its integrity. 
Right. Now, are there any communities here in California or across the United States that uh, have done a really good job of historical preservation? Do you think? There's a number of them. Uh, Pasadena, uh, mm -hmm. the list goes on and on. Uh, uh, Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara. Carmel. Yeah. Carmel by the Sea. And they've implemented certain restrictions, uh, or I should say, uh, considerations as to uh, the development of these uh, resources. Right. And in the United States, too. Uh, um, Williamsburg. Williamsburg mm -hmm. is an excellent example. Mm -hmm. um, St. Augustine, mm -hmm. where uh, yeah. San Antonio too, San yes. Antonio. where uh, tourism is 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 really based on on their old towns. Um, is that right? Uh, yes, um, a Sacramento old town is a good example as well. Uh, that is one of the uh, more successful stories in California. Now, um, are there any? Uh, is there any possibility that this could happen in Los Altos? Are there any, for example, um, historical neighborhoods or districts that we should be considering? There's, there's the, I mean, the, the, the downtown Triangle area has um, been looked at once. There's also the University Orange Avenue area. Um, the, uh, one of the early track developments uh, in town was off of Paso Robles Avenue. In uh, North Los Altos. Yeah, and in South Los Altos, there's the Loyola Corners, with yes. a group of small houses that mm -hmm. maintain a, an, uh, an individual character. To the so there's area. a number of properties and or districts or potential districts uh, in Los Altos. Okay, now what um, would uh, what would a, a homeowner, for example, who doesn't have a historical designated home? Uh, would they have any responsibilities if they were to live in a historic district? Yeah, yeah, yes, um, their responsibility, their, a set of guidelines would be established similar to guidelines that we have for all of Los Altos now, but that would be particular to the neighborhood. Sure. Um, in the University of Orange Avenue area, a set of guidelines would be developed that identify the characteristics of that neighborhood and future development within that neighborhood would be um, guided towards the maintenance of that neighborhood. We've, in the downtown Los Altos area, in the Triangle, when Ramsey's Garage went, the Historical Commission had looked at that as a district, and although uh, we didn't designate it as a district, we did develop a set of guidelines that showed how the buildings within the area, with the, in the whole triangle related to each other, passed those guidelines on to the Planning Commission, which then adopted them as guidelines for uh, the planning philosophy in the town and the development on corner of First and State. It was one of the first Good groups example that of that. used mm -hmm. that, right. where the character of the 25-foot increment and the height and the angle of the facades off the uh, streetscape. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, historical designation itself. I, I know that a lot, not a lot, but there have been a few buildings in town, commercial buildings, and ha there have been now some residential buildings that have been, that have been designated. Do you want to, can you give some good examples for viewers that, that, buildings that they may be able to recognize? Well, obviously the train station, a, a good very one. good example. Uh, there's others in the downtown area uh, as well. Early buildings by the, the Los Saddles Land Company, which is on the corner of 1st and um, Main Street, Main. Mm -hmm. and uh, the building across the street on the corner of 2nd and Main. The EFS building was once a, a, a grocery store. Grocery mm -hmm. store, first Boy Scout, first class. Community and, center, yeah. we were basically upstairs yeah, for right. the Boy Scouts. And the right. Mm -hmm. Classes. So the residences that are really significant, the Winchester or Miriam House. Over off of, uh, parallel with uh, El Monte, the Winchester Merriman House is the oldest building in town and Sarah Winchester uh, helped in the, the remodel of the original building which dates Boys. back to the late to 1860s. maybe 1860s or mm -hmm. earlier. And Sarah Winchester is she? It's the Winchester Mystery House. Uh, Merriman is her yes, sister. Her sister. Right. So, right. so uh, we get the yeah. context. So it's there. one of the oldest wood frames. Portion of that house is one of the oldest 
wood frame structures in all of Santa Clara County. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we just recently designated a house, um, Ernest, Cox Ernest Coxhead, mm -hmm. and um, I think we have some plans for another de another designation soon. Good examples mm -hmm. of 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 homes and buildings um, uh, that uh, you can uh, you can see around town that are um, already designated. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I believe there's some plaques on, on some of those buildings. That's correct. Right, mm -hmm. that give you some of the historical uh, background. Um, now, getting back to the inventory, if somebody has a house on the inventory, uh, they, they find out, you know, by looking in City Hall, you know, at the inventory itself, that they have a house on the inventory, um, whether it be designated or not designated, what should they do first? Mark? Well, I think the first thing that they would need to do is go down to the City Hall to find out if it is on the, the uh, listing. Uh, once it is on the listing, it would be advisable to set up an appointment either with the pl uh, planner at the counter or the building official and uh, some of the members of the Historic Commission to kind of review what it is that uh, the individual applicant is thinking of proposing. Uh, with that, we can sort of set up a partnership, if you will, with the applicant and give them advice and direction and, and uh, uh, at least comment on what they're proposing and make suggestions sure. that would be uh, of positive uh, nature. I think the notion of a partnership is good in that if there's something particular about their project that may need a variance or um, the State Historic Building Code or yeah. they may be eligible for some other considerations that they're unaware of. And so that if you have a building that's built before 1945, you should definitely go down to the mm -hmm. building department, ask to see the inventory, check to see if your building's in there. And if it is, uh, some, there's a subcommittee from the Historical Commission that would be glad to meet with you and talk to you about what uh, things there are that they may want to consider in the development. Well, our, our recent project, you know, with the, the designation on Yerba Santa, um, yes. you know, that's a good um, example of, mm -hmm. of the Historical Commission working with the homeowner on... As well know, as with planning. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a very successful uh, joint project. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I, I believe that... Uh, right. They, it's the owners came in talked to us mm -hmm. about the project, told us what they wanted to do. We identified some of the issues where they were going to need variances, talked to the planning department for them, with, and then later with them, and were able to establish the, uh, uh, they got a number of exceptions. Right. So um, we've talked about historical buildings, but um, if we want to look into the future, for example, um, are there any, you know, districts or buildings that you can think of that might eventually come onto the inventory? Uh, certainly. Um, we have a number of buildings <laughs> in town. Uh, we have some that are uh, of the 50s uh, period, uh, the ranch style homes. Uh, some of them are the uh, uh, Eichler type homes, the uh, contemporary. Uh, we also have the Chamber of Commerce building as an example, which is a, a significant uh, architectural uh, building. So there are There's a numbers, lot of future yes. uh, homeowners yeah. out there that you know, may yeah. have historical buildings in it's the future. Not, and I suppose a little aspect to it is that it's not always just the, the historical houses, although that's what we have most of in, in town, but there's also the uh, planter boxes that the town uses for their pine trees that are yeah. of potential historical significance in the orchard around City Hall. That's Which is a, 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 a resource. It's not a building. So. Exactly. That's a good one to, mm -hmm. to remember to bring in. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's sum up now. Um, we know why, as a community, we should be concerned with historic preservation. Um, you know, what, can you say it in, in a few words? What what is it that it, we should be concerned about in Los Altos? Because Los Altos is, is a special community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the, the lessons from the past that inform us about our direction, where we're going, and give us the basis for making our future decisions. It's, it's our integrity, our soul. It's, it's what's going to make 
um, informed planning decisions based on a knowledge of the historic past and, and preserving its integrity are going to make and keep mm -hmm. Los Salos as a unique place that has its own sense of place. Good, and I'm glad you mentioned the Los Altos' sense of place because uh, that's another um, video project that the commission undertook this year, and uh, we are going to be showing it in this time sl slot, the Los Altos history time slot, so the viewers can 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 see it in, in this time slot, and also can uh, borrow it from the library, um, and we'll also have it available at at History House. So. Uh, I want to thank you very much, uh, thank you for Mark and us. Steve, for, for joining mm -hmm. us tonight. It's been very informative, and um, I, uh, thanks for watching the Los Altos History Show. To all our viewers, um, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.